Welcome to video two, listing your items with Inventory Lab. As you can see, we created a batch in the previous video, sitting right here under open batches. So the next step is to list your items, and you can do that by searching for the item on Amazon.com. Now we only search for the active listings of products. So if you get an error back, product not found, you'll actually have to go to Seller Central to create that listing. You may see the Amazon Plus Unlisted if you're not using Unlisted Inventory. And you can find more about that with one of our customer coaching classes. You can see the link there at the bottom of the screen. You want to switch this to Amazon Catalog. That'll speed up your searching uh, for the products. So you can search by name, UPC, uh, a current MSKU, or an FN SKU. And if you search for MSKU or FN SKU, we'll be searching for uh, those items on your current inventory so that you would list it as a replenishment. But for new items, we'll search Amazon.com to get matched to a current active listing. So for example, let's say I want to sell Folgers. I'm just typing it in and I click search. And now you can see I have a lot of options. If I'm scanning a UPC, it'll narrow it down dramatically. But let's say that I'm selling this particular item and you'll see right away that it gives me the product details and it also tells me that an expiration date is required for this item. This link will take you right to the product details page on Amazon. Uh, reminders, you don't really need to worry about these unless you want uh, a, a reminder to show up in this area at a date, maybe to recheck stock, something along those lines. You want to make sure that you have your tax code input GenTax is a general. If you have a food item, you can also search for that. And as you go down through the list of tax codes from Amazon, you can see that it has a category. This one most likely is a food gen. Reach out to Seller Central Support for more info on the tax codes they use. Uh, the battery and regulated obviously don't apply here, but if it did, you would have to make sure to answer those questions and fill out the subsequent questions. Now, total quantity, let's say I have, I'm just going to say I have 100 to sell. I want to put in my cost. We'll say my cost was $3 each. I purchased it today and I bought it at Bymart. Now you see the expiration date is required. We remind you here as well. So I can't type in here until I actually activate it by clicking on the eyeball. So I'm going to click on the calendar icon. Let's say it expires on this date. And here we have the shipping estimate. It's estimated 80 cents per pound. You may have to double check this with your past shipment cost. You'll take the cost of the shipment and divide it by the weight of the shipment. And that'll get your cost per pound. And you can check that over several different shipments to get an average, but it's anywhere from 30 cents to a dollar usually. MSKU, we have it here that it, uh, we're generating it. Inventory Lab is generating the MSKU automatically. Um, when you get into the customer coaching classes that I've mentioned, they'll go into more detail about how to create your own custom MSKU. For now, the default is to let Inventory Lab generate that. I could also type in my own if I like. New condition, obviously it's a food product, new condition. Uh, and with new items, you cannot put any condition notes per Amazon policy. On the right, we have the offers page, and these are the active offers. The new is the merchant fulfilled offers. And then we have used, obviously not in this case. And this is the FBA column. If you're listing FBA, this is what you want to pay attention to. See, these are both new. The buy box indicate that the $12.48 is the list price and Amazon we believe is the seller you can see here um, we're just going to click on this to select it and it's selected here I could also click on this one and when I do it changes or I could type over this and create my own uh, list price we show you the net profit and your ROI based on the cost per item these are some research tools that you can look through. Um, you can also create these two as your own. This one is set to Keepa. Again, in our customer coaching classes, we'll get into more detail on how to set up these custom um, research tools. For now, we're just going to go with what we have here. I already know I'm going to sell this. And the next step, once I've done this, is to add it to the batch. 
Now the item's added to the batch. I can see the information that I've added at a glance. It tells me the quantity. So these are just tentative until we learn how Amazon treats your products and where they send them. Um, this is just a guess at this point. You'll know for sure once we get to the proposed FBA shipments page. And now that I've added this to the batch, I also see my cost information here as well as how much profit I'm going to make when those items sell. If I needed to edit anything, I can click on the menu and click edit. Now these two menu items will be gone over in a customer coaching class. So make sure you look at those classes, links at the bottom. And so everything looks good. I'm going to just continue on. If this is the only thing that I have to list to sell, then that's all I do. If I have more items, I can then search for more and then list them again in the same process. The next step now is to just review the batch. And this is where I'm going to make sure everything is set before I actually submit this to Amazon to get my uh, shipping plans created. I can click on any of these to change this information if it's incorrect. Uh, everything looks good though, so I'm just going to do that. Um, and next step is submit. And this will always be checked because we have to send in product feeds. Uh, request proposed FBA shipment plans from Amazon. This should also be default checked. If down the road you want to just send the information and create everything in Seller Central, you can do that by unchecking. That also is a topic that go is gone over in our customer coaching classes. Once I click sync, we'll be taken to the proposed FBA shipments page where you'll then be able to create your shipments. And we'll go over that in the next video.